Hi everyone, Gary Coleshill here and you are in the right place. We're going to be talking today about how to uh, go to college uh, without going broke. So it's a good topic indeed and a fairly complex one. That's why we have with us today Scott Rulon, CPA from uh, Glendale, Arizona, who specializes in helping um, college students and of course their parents and grandparents as well um, pave their way through the minefield of college loans and uh, funding college so without much further ado I'm going to pass you over to Scott he's going to impart words of wisdom to you so Scott you have the floor take it away absolutely Gary so excited to be here today it looks like we have a a big crowd, that's even more exciting. So we certainly expect lots of participation. And so just a little introduction about myself. So I was trained by the godfather of college planning. His name is Ron Carruthers. So he's the one that taught me everything I know about college planning. And I've been doing this for about 10 years. I'm the creator of the Rulon Career Planning Method, the founder of Rulon Financial and Tax, and for the past 32 years, I've been helping families get more money for college and figure out the best way to pay for the difference without affecting their lifestyle. And you know what? I have sent uh, a kid to college. He's now graduated. I'm proud to say he is a mechanical engineer at a major tech company, and he has done very well. And so... To tell you that there's kind of some proof in the pudding, I just wanted to let you know that um, my son, not a, although perhaps not the smartest kid in the class, he got a full ride scholarship. So mom and dad, which we're very thrilled, only had to pay a room and board. What do you think about that, Gary? I think that's a good do indeed. Very impressive. Yeah. And in fact, we've had some very successful students over the year, over the years, um, a couple of years ago, we sent a young lady to Boston University. She got a full ride, and I mean full ride, I mean $72,000 a year for the last four years. And um, on the day of her graduation, she sent me a beautiful picture of her on the steps of Boston University throwing up her mortarboard. So that's very exciting. I am told that she has now been accepted into medical school in Boston and will be probably just started medical school this year. So that's very exciting for her. So here's what you'll learn during this presentation. You'll learn how to pay less for college so you can save more for retirement and enjoy the next few years without worry. We'll teach you a five-step formula for planning for school so you can pay the least amount for college. And we'll also tell you how to avoid the biggest mistakes that other families are making so you can finally stop worrying about what they say. You know, the one thing that I always hear, I hear two different kinds of complaints. You know, they say that my, my student is probably not the sharpest egg in the classroom. But guess what? It's not all about being the sharpest egg in the classroom. Um, in fact, if you have... Um, you know what, if your grades above the 3.0, and especially if you're more towards that 3.6, 3.7, there is an excellent opportunity for you to get some college funding. And when I'm calling college funding, it's not just about the college loans. Uh, most of you might be surprised to know that only the, not everybody gets scholarships, you know, Probably only like three to four percent actually get scholarships, but most of the funding comes from the colleges and universities themselves. And so the kind of complaints that I also hear is from the very rich families. They say, oh, my goodness, you know, I filled out that FAFSA thing, but I didn't get any aid from it. Well, guess what? If you don't fill out the FAFSA, you won't get any aid for anything. Um, for some of you, you may be lucky that um, if your income is $60,000 or less, your child could qualify for a Pell Grant. And when I looked at the Pell Grant a couple months ago, you know, you're looking at getting several thousand dollars in grants. Do you know what a grant is? Hey, Gary, what's a grant? Grant is free money. Basically, you don't have to. It's uh, given to you. 
to help you with your finances, but you don't have to pay it back, which is a good thing. <laughs> Are you sure about that? You said free? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, both my boys went to uh, college. My eldest went to the American Film Institute, and my youngest went to ASU, and uh, we, we got grants and uh, help via your program, and uh, it helped them to pay for it. So, yeah, absolutely. Know that absolutely and that all comes from you have to fill out the fafsa form if you don't fill out the fafsa form you can't get anything yeah that's where you start basically <laughs> after that the hard work begins but uh yes you, you do have to fill out the FAFSA form. yeah and if you want to go to a more elite college and guess what you can go to the more elite colleges like harvard or yale for wholesale price you can pay for them about the same price you'd pay for in this case we're in arizona about the price of Arizona State University or U of A or NAU or GCU. So if you have one of those talented kids who's done really well on their ACT or their SAT and they have um, really high grades, you know, they might be eligible for, for one of the more elite institutions. But guess what? You don't have to go to an elite institution to get great grades. Um, my father actually taught in the college system for over 40 years. And he said, Scott, when it really comes down to it, most of these elite institutions like Harvard and Yale, although important, they're really more famous for their graduate schools than their undergraduate schools. For those, So for those of you that don't want to waste today almost $90,000, yep, I said 90000 um, to go to one of these elite institutions, know that there is still hope. So why is this important to you now? Most traditional planning we've learned is dead wrong. Did you hear that? It's dead wrong. You hear all the time about these 529 plans. They were supposed to be the miracle of sliced bread when it came to college planning. The only problem is the college just caught on to that and they added that to income that you would receive for FAFSA. And that actually hurt you when it comes to paying for college. There are two vehicles when saved correctly that can help you from going to college. Going to college. So you wanna learn about more of those? You'll have to tune in later. And find a little more, bit more about that. So college is getting more expensive by the moment and can cost over, brace yourselves, $250,000 per year per student. Imagine, you know, it's bad enough for one student, but Garrett, what would you do if you had two or three people in your family that had to go to college? You're probably living in shock. So just remember, if you borrow that money, that means you would pay back $378,000 and your payment would max out at $3,149 a month for 10 years. So that's 120 payments of $3,149. So imagine if you have more than one child, could you do that? Hmm. There must be a better way. But if you understand the system, you don't have to worry about any of these. So let's talk a little bit about the financial aid rules. We, well, these rules are created by Congress. They are created by the Higher Education Reauthorization Act. Wow, that's a mouthful. And guess what? It's 847 pages long. Woo! So they calculate what you can afford based on how many criteria do you think they base that on, Gary? Oh, golly. Um, I don't know. At least a dozen, I would think. Actually, 101. Golly. The formula is 36 printed pages long. That sounds like fun. Well, honestly, they don't always make sense because, well, just look at Congress. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding how the rules apply to you is step one in saving, in saving money on the cost of college. So let's give you a short case study here. We have a client with a $500,000 home, a $500,000 rental property, and hundred k plus income. And then 
we'd have to look at what schools actually have money. Ooh, that's scary. But wait, that's not all. <laughs> Parents pay 27500 a year for six years. Yeah, you know the average student, you know how long it takes them to go to school, Gary? Um, Four years, maybe. Actually, it's closer to five and a half or six years. Yeah, what if, what if you money. can save that extra two years and your child or student only went to school for four years? Wouldn't that be a savings to you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So so that would be a total of 165000 if they went for six years. Versus if they maybe only went for four years, maybe it's only 94000 And that's tuition is what we're talking about here. That's the difference. It's crazy. Having information like this in advance is like having your own mole in the financial aid office. So imagine you have a mom and dad and two girls and all went to state schools. Not too much money, um, 22,250 each per year. That's about $27,000 in total. And so when we're talking about this, we're actually talking about community college. Sometimes you can save a lot of money going to community college. And there are a lot of community college programs. And in fact, there's a few here in Phoenix Paradise Valley Community College, Glendale Community College, they actually have four-year programs. Not bad, so you can save a lot of money that way. And they are also integrated in, in this case, to the Arizona state system or just plug into the state system that's in your that's in your state. I'm sure it works just as well. So we're always working to find the best way to earn money. So let's talk a little bit about student loans, Gary. Um, how many okay. kinds of student loans do you know? Oh, golly. Um, there's private loans. There's uh, private loans. Those are called, yep, parent plus loans. Uh, there are government loans, correct? There are government loans, yep. And um, do you, are there any loans from the colleges themselves? Generally, I've not seen any from the colleges themselves, but the colleges themselves might offer some work study opportunities. Right. Okay. Yeah. And what you were saying was interesting about the community colleges because one of the biggest expenses that we found was actually board and lodging. Uh, that was as, you know, virtually as much as the cost of college or pretty close to. Uh, my oldest son was, went to uh, the film school in Los Angeles, so of course he had to relocate and, and rent somewhere to be there to be there for school, and that was uh, a you know a big chunk of money too. So going local is is a real it can really really help if you do go to a local community college, and the, you know and, the, uh, and it's within uh, fair re you know distance from your home. Then of course the uh, you know your child your student is saving money on on the board and lodging, which is a big chunk. Oh, absolutely. So let me tell you a little bit about a case study, and this was actually one of my clients, and this really happened. So I had a client that was laid off from a tech job, making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, unfortunately, he had developed leukemia, and his wife was developing a cater catering business. And unfortunately, they overreported their assets by $251,000. You know why? They put their 401k <laughs> into uh, the college assets. And I'm thinking the more money that you earn, the less money you can get back. That's about right. So yeah. uh, one of the things most people don't know is you can correct your FAFSA form. Now, just realize that if you correct it, um, the colleges will ask because they'll think you're automatically think you're cheating, but um, you can certainly verify that this was different. And so I see a lot of people put their 401k or their IRA in the um, college funding formula and it absolutely doesn't belong there. So I will tell you in this case, as soon as I got that fixed, they got an immediate $5,860 more in money for each year. 
plus some additional Stafford loan. And they went to school um, here in Phoenix, not in Phoenix, it's actually in Prescott, uh, called Embry, Embry Riddle Aeronautical Institute. So we were able, because we had changed the assets, come up with extra funding of $32,172. So, I mean, obviously sometimes there's special circumstances. So sometimes they will ask you, um, in fact, they will always ask you, do you own a business? And so how many, when they were filling out the FAFSA application and put the value of their business on the FAFSA form? Would you do that, Gary? Uh, prob yeah, probably not, actually, because it's going to make you, you, I don't see how it's relevant. And uh, uh, the value of the business doesn't mean that you've got that money. That's and true. In fact, if you are a business owner and you have less than 100 employees in your business, you do not have to put that on the FAFSA application. Oh, and yet I've seen people do that. And guess what? Guess what happened to their tuition aid? <laughs> yeah, less. Or, or it zero, went out the door. Or zero, or zero yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, um, there's some special things you can do if you have rental real estate um, or income over $250,000. I will tell you, so... Although you probably won't see need-based aid if you make over $250,000, it's really at that point, Gary, more of a how efficient do you use your money? So sometimes I will ask people, how much money do you have to make to spend a dollar? Right. So wouldn't it stand to reason that you would want to, even if you could pay for college, wouldn't you want to pay in the most tax-efficient fashion? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And Gary, did you know that um, the U.S. government, through filing your tax return, can give you some automatic college scholarships? You mean uh, by uh, kind of, um, how can I put it, by putting different stuff in different uh, tax brackets, I would think. Of well, some, there's actually it. some tax credits. Oh, okay. I like to call them tax scholarships right so you can get some tax scholarships that are by the way refundable refundable means you can put the money in your pocket okay. that's a great thing that's so great. isn't that the equivalent of getting extra college scholarship money oh, so sure, for yeah. one for Absolutely. one of the credits you can get up to twenty five hundred dollars back in your pocket okay money saved is money earned Absolutely. absolutely and the other one's about fifteen hundred dollars um, so there's two different types of tax credits that can help you with college. Um, so let me give you another bit of a, a case study here. So we had a mom and dad. They had a great sales year followed by a poor one. What industry do you think they worked in, Gary? Um, depends when it was, but I'm thinking maybe uh, the, the food industry, restaurants. Well, actually, it's real estate. Oh, real estate? Oh, okay. <laughs> they had a terrific sales year, and then they had a poor one. Sounds like the seminar, one. Business, the bit seminar business with, with which I have been involved for quite a while. When when we hit COVID, it just went uh, pretty much down the toilet. And, you know, a lot of things did during COVID and gave you very bad years for most industries that I've come across, actually. But unfortunately, the tax return was based on their great year. Right. The one that they use for the FAFSA thing. Right. So what would you do in this case, Gary? Um, I would think you submit the uh, the bad year as well. Yeah, you should at least submit a note. Yeah, um, I would have thought so. For that. In fact, we helped this particular family. Not only did they have a poor sales year, um, they had forgotten to file their FAFSA and we actually helped them get $6,000 grant per year. Okay, that's great. Well, yeah. So Gary, here's our $247 gift to you. A 60 minute strategy session for your family. How about that? That's a great offer. That what is you, a great offer. What do you, you have to do to get that? Well, that means you have to give one you have to give one of us a call. <laughs> 
And, you know, one of the things that we do for this, um, we require a $50 deposit and we will um, actually, we will put that against any further work you want us to do. Um, but if you do show up and you won't, don't want to do further work, we'll refund the $50. What a deal. Can't say fairer than that. We better, yeah. put our, we better put our phone numbers up on the screen then. So Absolutely. We'll, do, we'll so. do that very quickly. Also, don't forget there is a questionnaire at the end of this session, uh, which would be great if you, uh, uh, if you want to do the free consultation because it gives us information that we don't have to waste time on the call getting from you. So the call can be, you know, much more effective. Let me just put my number up on the screen here. And the questionnaire does pop up at the end of this session, it should pop up in your browser. And let me put Scott's number on there as well. Uh, make sure I did this right. So sometimes I like to say how to get free money for okay. college without going broke or in debt, selling body parts, or having to send, <laughs> send your kid to a junior college when you really want to go for, to afford your school. So what's the best way to describe what I do? Well, I'm in financial services, but with a very unique approach in that I help people find money they are losing unknowingly and unnecessarily. So there's five major areas of loss where we can look for money in your own budget. Um, that might be with your mortgage, that might be with the taxes that you pay, the qualified plans that you have, that might be the college you're currently sending people to and may even have to do with major capital purchases. So here's my confession. I've been at this a long, long time and I have done this for hundreds of families. So I absolutely know what I'm doing. This doesn't mean you can't, but for now, we're gonna go over the framework. Remember, everybody's situation is different. So you have to research some of this for yourselves. So in the end, you'll have to understand there's a financial aid rule book and how it applies to you. Know which schools have money and which do not. Ooh, that's a really important one. Number three, figure out where you're at for retirement and learn how to pay your share. You know what the number one problem of retirement is, Gary? Living too long. <laughs> Maybe. It's actually paying for your kid's college. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's another one, yeah. Yep, you want to fill out your forms accurately and on time. And so I want to ask you, Gary, how good are you at negotiating with billion-dollar institutions? <laughs> um, I, I have done, and I can be fairly effective at that. I've done uh, a lot of business over, over the last 30 years, and some of the companies I work with were pretty big, yeah. Okay, sure. but if You're, it weren't you, Gary, how do you think most people would do well, that? Well, most people, yeah, that's easy. That's very true. I haven't had that experience. Um, I mean, it's it's tough enough buying a, buying a car from a dealership. Uh, and I think this is Absolutely. a little, little bit more difficult. Buying a house and a home are the biggest things that we have to deal with on a personal level. But yeah. uh, college is something else. And it involves uh, just as much money, actually, if you think about it, a lot more than buying a car. And uh, if they're gonna, if you're gonna pay out two hundred and fifty grand for your, uh, you know, for your child to go to college, or they, or they are, that that's a big chunk of change. That's a major financial decision, and you definitely need good advice on that because one little slip up on any of those forms, and uh, you know, you can end up being disqualified or getting getting very little or nothing. So yeah, I, th I think it's uh, somewhere that people do need a lot of advice. Absolutely. So what do you need to know? Just like with tax planning, with a little understanding, you can save yourself a little money. With a more complete understanding, you can save a ton. How would you like to save a ton of money sending your kids to college, Gary? I think everybody would love to. Absolutely. So when we're doing that, there are three magic letters we need to learn. Now, they've changed this slightly on the application. They don't call, necessarily call this EFC anymore, but it is called expected family contribution. And that's the amount of contribution based on the FAFSA form 
that each college expects you to pay. So you want to be really careful with that. You want to make sure when you fill out the FAFSA form, which, by the way, is 129 questions, that's what covers that 101 different aspects for getting money for college. So you want to be careful with that. And Gary, um, so I think that's probably pretty good for today. I know that you have a very special offer for the people that listen to this. So why don't you go into that? Yep, I'm going to have to change screens here. So bear with, me, bear with me while I do that. And I'll try and bring that up on the screen. Let's see if I can make that work. There you go. Do you see that rather nice picture of a college up there? Is that Oxford? Uh, no, it's not actually. It's one of the states. I can't honestly remember where it is, but I thought it was very, uh, very attractive. So I thought it would be a nice picture for the slideshow. Um, but uh, yeah, I can, I can always get back to you and tell you where it is. But it, it is, it is in the United States. Now let's switch screens here. Here's the offer uh, that we've been working on, and as it says up there with a the smiley face, it's a great one. Um, we have a special offer, which we call the College Planning Academy, and it consists of four live on, online training sessions with Scott. And basically, session one is what you need to succeed. Session two is very important indeed. They're all important, which is how to complete the FAFSA. Uh, third session is how to find the right college for you that makes the most sense for what you want to be doing, the, the career that you, you want your uh, student to have afterwards. So obviously, setting that, that up correctly is extremely important. And lastly, but not leastly, how to navigate the college loan minefield. Now, each of those sessions is valued at $747. Plus, we have a free bonus session, which Scott's already been talking about, um, which is a one-on-one -on -one with Scott, a 997 value in this package, giving you a total, a grand total of 3,228. Uh, but don't panic. We are going to show you how to reduce that. Uh, sessions will be held every two weeks and they'll all be available as recordings. So if that makes sense, let's move on here. We're going to show you how to save over $2,000 by acting right now and this offer is going to be up and available until 8 p.m this evening pacific standard time we're going to do the whole package for just 997 dollars but there's even more good news basically this is the, the package you're going to get we've just gone over the four live training sessions online with scott plus a free bonus session with him, with you, one-on-one. -on -one. But, 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 you, there's two ways of doing this. One is that you can register at this link here, tinyurl.com forward slash college in full, and you can make one payment of nine ninety seven, and you're done, and you get all those things you just discussed, the four sessions and the uh, bonus one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation. Or, if you prefer, you can register on this second link here, uh, which is tinyurl.com forward slash college in four. And it's called college in four because you can actually make four monthly payments instead of just $267. There's a seven day money back guarantee. And if you have any questions on the program, feel free to call us on 888-894-2929 and we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. So that's that's basically about it. If you want to get started on this package right away with a very special price of nine ninety seven, and save yourself two grand, again, we're all about saving money here, uh, or you can do the four monthly payments for two sixty seven dollars each. So, uh, in a couple of minutes, when we wrap this up, you'll be seeing the questionnaire in your browser. If you could follow that up, uh, fill that out for us, and we'll follow up with you afterwards. Uh, that would be great. So, Scott, do you have anything else you'd like to add? 
Yeah, just a couple things. So in part one, we're going to teach you how to understand the costs of college. Part two, we're going to teach you the financial aid basics. In part three, we're going to tell you how to maximize scholarships and grants. And number four, we're going to teach you how to manage your student loans wisely. And then what I'm going to do in our special session is I'm going to help you create a financial plan just for you for college. Imagine that, a financial plan tailored to your family. And we will do that in an hour. Um, but this is a great opportunity for all of you. $2,000 worth of work for only $997. That's a great deal, Gary.